identity, much like holidays, are defined by culture and history, both of which can be limiting and misleading. I decided to spend the Thanksgiving before I traveled to Ghana with a family unlimited by history or culture. I let them tell their story. It was Prezi Bai's Jonathan Zuke Oki, and then there's Valerie Doke Koma uh, Oki, okay. and then the next is me, April Dimabere Nobasi Oki, okay. and then my oldest brother, Etemawe James and Oki, okay. and then there's my mom, who's in Yabasi Akai Oki, okay. and my dad, whose name is Basing Alabo. Sentu, <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't lose sight of who I am originally, but I do consider myself American. Like when I first came here, and I realized the not only racism but just the whatever between kids, like how cruel and mean kids could be, because you're not American. I wish so badly in my mind that I could just be American or go back to Nigeria, one of the two, because I didn't like the way I was being treated. And so that caused me to like build up this like. Yes. Yes. Something, be something, and like have be identified by that thing versus being identified as Af the African girl, a Nigerian girl. No, I wanted to call it. I'm hungry. The story goes for me anyway. I saw her all the time living with black people. I didn't think she was going to think I was cool enough to be a friend, so I never really spoke to her. But then one day I started talking to her out of the blue, and we clicked. And we've been in touch with her. Yeah, and then my version is that she like, had kind of together, and we were kind of fast, and she was watching to me and was like, Hi, I'm April, and I'm Nigerian. And I was like, Oh, okay. I was like, I'm Ife. Like you're Nigerian. You're like, are you Nigerian? I'm like, <laughs> my parents live in Nigeria. Yeah. Oh, all right. But then when I auditioned for Calabash, she also auditioned. Yeah. And then I know she's gonna be like. Oh, so people will say, oh yeah, she's a girl that's really funny, or like the girl that's in dance, or in this, or blah blah blah. So I would get that identity versus the other one. But but then as you grow up, you start to realize that who you are and where you come from and all that kind of stuff is important. So you come from Africa too? Sure. Where you come up here? When? I was young with my parents. Oh, uh, early, early. And then early. I lived in Texas. Texas is in Dallas. What's wrong with you? I lived in Dallas and then I moved here. Hundreds of Nigerians come to America looking to escape violence and poverty. The journey is never easy and rarely successful. But for those who make it, and especially women, life is an ongoing struggle to construct a culture and an identity that is reflective of both worlds. They're, they, they, once you get married, you take on anything of your husband's name, the, the tribe, the everything, and you, you know, you raise your family in that culture, you in that aspect from that tribe's view, and you do everything. Pretty much a good wife will do everything her husband tells her. That is a so I always consider myself being a jaw. I never really consider, like, say, I consider myself Calaba, but I never really go out and say um, Calaba. I mean, these are just really old traditional views. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going on today. Both my parents went to university in America, so they're gonna have a different view than those who never left the country until they became, you know, until they were adults to come here. I first came here to um, Wichita, Kansas, where I did my um, first year, and after that I transferred to University of Texas. My father was a little bit of a political activist, and my mother was a t uh, reporter for the local TV station, and she used to report real news about what was going on which was against the rules, so she got fired. Because we had always wanted to go home and give back. You know, my husband has his MBA from the University of North Texas, 
and I had a bachelor's, so we wanted to go back home, which we did. We were very optimistic at that time. And um, we went back, and things did not go well. Our house got held up at gunpoint, and we were robbed. And it was after that that my dad then moved me, my mom, and my sister to the village, and then moved to America with my older brother. And then about a year later, me, my mom, and my sister came to join them. At that point, we had already had two, two more children. That's April and Valerie. And in order to give them a chance, you know, for better ed education, we decided to come back. Many aspects of American culture have been incorporated, while African traditions, such as daily meals, remain rooted in their Nigerian identity. This here is um, Gary, we call it Gary, and I'm making it into a, a dough, which is fufu. So Gary, uh, mix this in hot water and stir it. And we're gonna have the fufu with the kusi. It goes well together. Sometimes you can eat the uh, ogusi soup with white rice. You pour the soup, which is a stew actually, but we call it soup. You pour it on uh, white rice. But tonight we're having fufu and the ogusi soup. This is how you eat it, guys. You just take it and put it in the soup and eat it. And it's great. <laughs> Yummy. We arrived for Thanksgiving. My name is Oki, first name Blessing, and this is my home. Welcome to 28 Brookwood Drive. Uh, thank God today is Thanksgiving Day. We want to celebrate by uh, fixing uh, my variation of squash soup. Of course, this is going to be part of our main dish which will also include a goosey soup. This is my adopted little um, African. <laughs> I was not their child, but I had been welcomed as if I were. My own culture and history did not limit my inclusion into the family. These ideas of inclusion reflected the unique traditional African principles of family and home. It's Thanksgiving and just 